I'm Nick Byer, welcome to Pocket for Wednesday, the 30th of March. Today on the show, diving for details, a cat plays Battlefront, and are iPads killing your neighbor's kid's social skills? All right, here's what's been making headlines. The federal court has found Valve guilty of breaching Australian consumer law. In August of 2014, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, or ACCC, took Valve to court because they did not offer a fair refund policy for Australians. Valve's argument throughout the case was that the company didn't officially conduct business in Australia and claimed that online purchases of products through their client did not meet the Australian consumer law's definition of goods and was therefore exempt. The federal court disagreed and found that Valve had misled consumers in terms and conditions of three versions of the Steam subscriber agreement and two versions of its Steam refund policy. They found that under these terms and conditions, consumers were not entitled to a refund for digitally downloaded games purchased from Valve via the Steam website or Steam client in any circumstance. Valve had excluded statutory guarantees and or warranties that goods would be of acceptable quality and Valve had restricted or modified statutory guarantees and or warranties of acceptable quality. So basically this is like if you went to a shop and you wanted to buy a fridge and the salesman's like this is the best fridge we have for sale so you go sure I'll take that fridge and then you take that fridge home but then you realize that fridge is really boring or has sort of terrible gameplay mechanics or sometimes that fridge doesn't even load so you take the fridge back and you go i want a refund for this fridge and the salesman goes no you are stuck with batman arkham fridge the federal court has not made a ruling on financial penalties as yet of course since this case was opened valve has introduced a pretty generous refund policy for consumers However, as this case is based on the consumer agreements which were in place 18 months ago, it is unlikely Valve's change of heart will affect the fines in their favor. Blizzard will remove a butt-focused victory pose from Overwatch. Over the shoulder is the name of the soon-to-be-removed victory stance for the character Tracer. On Blizzard's Battle.net forums, user Phipps made a point that the pose is out of character and therefore says to the player base, Oh, we've got all these cool diverse characters, but at any moment we are willing to reduce them to sex symbols to help boost our investment game. Game director Jeff Kaplan directly responded to and accepted the validity of the complaint and announced that it will be replaced. Kaplan added that the development team had been struggling internally with that pose and have actually already got an alternate pose ready to roll out. The latest trailer for Killer Instinct Season 3 has revealed that not only will this new round be introducing four new fighters, but there's a single player mode coming too. Shadow Lords is described as part ladder, part arcade mode, part story mode, and part roguelike. So for those of you who were wanting some context as to why the big blue alien was punching the big blue werewolf dude, you're in luck. And finally, The Escapist lives on. Following the closure of one of their offices last night, rumors sprung up that the whole publication would be closing down. Alexander McCree, the senior vice president for games at parent company Defy Media, shut down those rumors, confirming that the site will live on in Seattle. Internet personality Yahtzee Croshaw added his piece on Twitter where he said, to address questioning, Escapist site is not going down. Zero punctuation will continue to be on it every Wednesday. Carry on. I'm joined now by producer extraordinaire Elliot to discuss our final news story. Hello. Hi Nick Boy. How are you? I'm good and I promise to keep my shirt on today. And notice you're not wearing pants though. Yeah, hands above the table. Shadow of Mordor 2 is in development if the resume of stunt actress Lauren Kim is to be believed. Spotted by the website nerdleaks.com, Kim's eye stunt profile at the time listed motion capture work on Shadow of Mordor 2 in association with recognized 3D animation company Blur. Now we couldn't find the listing on her website when we checked, uh, and I assume it's been removed since the Nerd Leaks article went live, but it does raise an interesting point. Why are people so desperate to ruin game announcements by searching, you know, these sort of profile uh, websites or LinkedIn classification websites? I think people get a thrill out of, you know, getting the, uh, the... The scoop. The scoop. The dirty. That's right. In the know. Yeah. I mean, if you've got an interest in something, yeah. uh, the internet is a fun place to explore. Are you the kind of person that would just, like, lurk around and I stunt profile websites? I used to look for domains that had been bought by companies. Really? To see if they were, you know, that they, they, they're getting their dot coms before they announce something. Was this was this in your former life of, as a games writer for magazines, or is this like were you looking up petroleum companies and? <laughs> it used to be, um, you know, movies. Right. Just 
yeah. waiting for things to get announced. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, like, su you suspect something's in development or in production, and usually, like, finding out if they'd registered the domain was, was an easy way of finding out if something was, was happening. So I think it's the same thing with games, you know, uh, and, and it's just fun going hunting for that stuff, you know, sniffing around and looking at online resumes. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like people who data mine patch notes, or not patch notes, but patches that come out, and they see things embedded in there for the next release of something, and, and just right. going, yeah. Uh, maybe people are just bored. Maybe it's just like, maybe they're just going like, I don't have anything to do. I'm gonna look at ice stunt. <laughs> I guess some people also feel a bit starved for information. It's like that Nintendo NX fake controller that was yeah. made. I think people are so desperate for some real information that they end up making these hoaxes. <laughs> I love that it's, they're so desperate for real information. He just built himself half of an NX for real. He print, he 3D printed out. All right, if Nintendo aren't gonna tell me about it, just gonna print my own console. But the moral of the story really is, you know, if you sign an NDA because you're working on a game that hasn't been announced, mm. uh, you should know that that extends to your online resume. Yeah, just if you sign the NDA, never write down anywhere the word Shadow of Mordor 2. <laughs> just don't put it on anywhere. Forget it ever happened. Forget you were even in it. Be surprised when you see your names in the credit of the game, sort of six years later. All right, that's it. It's now time for Thing of the Day. Star Wars Battlefront may suffer from a lack of depth in content, but that doesn't matter for Dirty Hippie's cat Alvin. This kitty is happy enough hunting A-wings in the game's loading screen. And now it's talk through time where you suggest a topic and we talk through it. Today's topic comes in from Skipper the Pirate, who says, are video games now isolating us socially from a young age? I've worked in hospitality for about eight years now, and as such, I've seen the rise of the iPad being used at restaurants and cafes to keep kids quiet and still. More and more, I do see small children glued to their screens, playing video games while the adults chat with each other. While well, I enjoy this as it means I don't have kids running around my feet as I carry trays of food and drink around, could this be adverse to their social skills down the line? Elliot, you have created a human. How much screen time does your little one get? So I have a son who's three and a half, and um, we are very conscious of how much screen time mm. he gets. Are you, is, is this, was this a condescending <laughs> screen time? Screen time, well, yeah. you know, TV, iPads, iPads, phones, Dora on the phone. Whether it's passive watching mm -hmm. or actually interacting with a game mm. or an app that might be educational, yeah, you know, teaching them to recognize letters yeah. or count mm -hmm. things like that. It all is screen time, regardless of sort of what the content is. Yeah, I don't know the research, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think there's uninformed still, parent over <laughs> here. There is still a lot of research being done, uh, so the jury is out. I yeah. think, but you're not meant to expose them to more than a couple of hours a day uh, until the age of five. And then mm -hmm. after the age of five, I think it's okay for that to sort of well, be, be more than that. Yeah. In this situation, I think that's really interesting in a social setting. Mm. Um, I, I, I wouldn't do that personally because I think they're right in thinking that might stunt their social development a bit because you've got people all sitting around interacting and talking and then you're kind of shutting the kid out of that. I find it really sad when I see kids on iPads in public areas like that and, and not to judge parents because sometimes the kid is screaming and whatever and it's just like okay here just look at this to be quiet because I can't handle this right now but if it is this sort of situation where you're at a family lunch or something and there's just someone glued to the screen it is it, they're not interacting with you, but also you're not interacting with them. It means that you're not making the effort to, you know, entertain and enjoy and learn about your child and your child in, in the same way as not being able to feel comfortable talking to people and feel as though they're part of this. They feel isolated and alone. That is true, and I do agree with you. Mm. However, I think it's also important that parents don't aren't, aren't shamed or made to feel guilty. Oh, because, yeah, absolutely. You don't know really what's happened that morning. Oh, that's like that's you why I said. You could have had yeah. like a total nightmare morning, and you really need like five minutes for yourself. Absolutely. And giving your child something to watch can be fine. Maybe that's the only five minutes they're going to watch that entire day. Totally. And so that's okay. So it's careful not to judge people when you see them in public. But I but I think generally in that setting, yeah, I would try to encourage um, my son to actually be involved in the conversation. Yeah. I mean, you know, sure they. They don't maybe understand what you're talking about, but it's all about learning and, and absorbing. Uh, they're little sponges, right? Mm. So they're going to absorb what is happening around mm. them. 
Now, when you're at home, it's a different situation. Um, I think. Do you use this stuff in replacement for if, uh, like, when I was a kid, I would be given a book with letters and shapes and stuff in that? Are you going, here's a screen that you can match shapes up into thing, you know, like interactive educational stuff like that? Personally, um, I think we still look for non screen time activities. The tactile stuff. First. Yeah. But of course, you know, he's been exposed to a lot of that mm. and, and so he's interested and he'll ask to use it. Mm -hmm. And I think then in that situation, it's just important to sort of curate the content. But like everything in life, I feel like it's about moderation. How yeah. much you wear pants as compared to how much you don't yeah. wear pants. Common sense prevails. Yeah, uh, but most of the time, I would say if 90% if of the time when you're out uh, and you give your kid an iPad or something, the, the danger that's happening there is that the child is learning that it always needs to be stimulated by sort of something external that it always needs a screen entertaining it and its brain is not being able to just go to its own place. It's always just being preoccupied. Yeah, th that's really important. I think it's it's good for kids to get bored mm. because that encourages healthy development of, an, of imagination, yeah. of finding things to entertain yourself. You know, this suddenly becomes a sword. You know, and yeah, like, totally. Just that, that's really healthy. And I've seen it even in me. Uh, I listen to too many podcasts where I go, if I'm not listening to a podcast when I'm walking somewhere, I get stressed out because I go, oh, I feel like I should be listening to that. And that's bad because it's like I'm relying on external stimulation all the time. And that's something I need to cut out and I'm about to turn 30. That's a scary thing of the modern age, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, but then obviously, you know, games can be social. So uh, the question here about isolating is socially, there is, there's a huge social aspect to games. But uh, Yeah, but totally. But for kids for under five, kids. there's no way they're online playing, you know. Although you and I have definitely been murdered by a three-year-old in Call of Duty at some point, <laughs> for sure. But most of the time, it's not a multiplayer experience. Unless you, Elliot, are playing a game with your son and you guys are sitting there doing something together and having a social experience while playing. Yeah, totally. Sitting with them, you know, talking to them about what it is that they're looking at. The having that interaction, that's going to be way healthier than them just sort of being in their little bubble. Yeah, I guess we're saying love and pay attention to your children. And I'm saying that to most of the teenagers who are watching this show right now. All right, that's it for today's episode of Pocket. My Pocketeers! Do you love your kids? How much screen time do you give them? If you have children, let us know in the comments. And while you're there, please suggest a talk through topic for tomorrow. And while you're on the internet, uh, get your kid to check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then ask your child to help you join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. That kid can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV and follow Pocket at Nick Boy, at Pierreth, at GG, at Monkey and at Samgi, who is the resident baby of Pocket, who also, Sam, get off your iPad. No more screen time for you today. Uh, he's at Elliot Fish on Twitter, and there are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's Thing of the Day graphic was made by Dan the Man. If you are a man or a woman like Dan, and you made a thing, please send it in. Until tomorrow, Nick, why out? Clap out.